Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Biology and of course today we are uh, continuing our study into the structure of organisms. In the last class we looked at the amoeba, the one you call the amoeba. Okay, it's amoeba. All right, and then of course today we are looking at the structure of paramecium. All right, and of course do not forget to like this video. Please like in the video, we make other students to see this video and to see these lectures and follow also so they can succeed and pass like you. I be mean, you know what make the pass. So please. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Subscription is free, absolutely free. Okay, you're not paying to watch these videos, all right? So just subscribe so that whenever I publish a new video, you get notifications, all right? And of course, uh, do not forget to share, all right? Keep sharing. And my prayer for you is that you are going to write this exam once and for all. I am going to succeed in the name of Jesus. Okay, please make sure you type amen in the comment section. Let me know that you are following. Drop something in the comment section for me. All right? Drop dollars too. Drop money. Okay, now, today we are looking at the structure of the paramecium. Okay? Do not forget that this tutorial, of course, is brought to you by the O3 School Jam app. All right? We'll talk about the app later. But let us see a question from the app concerning uh, paramecium. All right, so this is a 2018 question, uh, number 19. 2018 question, number 19. They say the examples of autotrophic organisms. Okay, organisms that can well, manufacture their own food. Okay, the examples of autotrophic organisms include the following, except A, euglena, B, paramecium, C, climadomonas, D, spirogyra. All right, so we're going to come back to this question, all right, after the class, okay, and so many other questions. We, we leave the questions for the end, all right? If you study and you don't practice question, you are doing yourself well. Your head, your head go just choke and you know, go, you go hard you to quick word to answer question when you see question. But of course, if you practice question and you read together with it, oh, it goes sweet. You know what they call blah blah. It goes sweet. So please, study. Practice questions too. That's why you need this application. Okay, this is a CBT practice application, and your exam is a CBT exam. So download the Otris School Jam app. It has all the past questions. You don't need to go and buy past questions outside. It has classroom feature where there are lecture notes. Okay, so you don't need to go and buy textbook outside. There are also a question search feature. You can search for question according to topic, and the question that Jamba set under that topic will come out for you to answer. Wonderful. Then also we have the UTME challenge, a mock challenge that will conduct every Saturday. You compete with your mate, you win prizes, and of course, you get used to jam set question, you build confidence to all the main exam, you book out to the hall and match it, and match all the, match, match the exam anyhow. All right? So please, stay focused, download the app. Activation is just 3,000 error as at the time of shooting this video. Whenever it increases, I don't know, but if it increases, please know that it has increased. All right? But you will not know because you will pass your exam at once. Right? You will pass your exam at once. It's my prayer for you, my endless prayer for you. All right? So please, stay focused. Now, let's look at the structure of the paramecium. We'll be back to this question. Let's look at the structure of the paramecium. Now, the paramecium, of course, is a protozoa also. Okay? It's a protozoa. Protozoa. Okay, it's a what? It's a protozoan. The paramecium is what? It's a protozoan. Okay, and of course, it has what? It's, it has what? Cilia. Look at this cilia. How this thing that look like hair like structures. Okay, it has hair like structures that is known as what? A cilia. It is characterized by this what? Hair like structures. And one very, very unique thing, okay, I can notice about this paramecium is that what? It looks like slippers. Abby? Abby, you know the number of slippers, right? Okay, so it has a, it is characterized by a slipper shape. Okay, you can see it look like what like slippers. This cilia, okay, it has this many cilia that is used for what that it that it uses for movement. Okay, this cilia is so to propel the what the cell, okay, towards what food and other things. Okay, so propels the in fact in paramecium has up to four thousand cilia. There are so many. These cilia are seen, this cellular structure, you can see them cilia, all right. They are so very, very, very many. Okay, and then of course you can see the pellicle here. All right, I want to talk about these parts, then you can see so storm. Then you can see what the aura groove, okay. This uh, this is so uh, cytostom, we call it uh, cytostom, we call them what the cell mount. That is the cell mount, all right. Then, of course, we have it has two nucleus the micronucleus and the macronucleus, all right. The micronucleus and the macronucleus. I'm going to tell you the functions of them, all right. Then, of course, that's what this uh, anal pore, okay. It's called what the cytro cytoproct. Okay, the cytoproct, the anal pore, all right? Then it has what a contractile wall vacuum, a contractile vacuum that it uses for osmoregulation and for excretion, all right? This is for what osmoregulation and excretion. All right, so now let's continue to our study about what the paramecium, the structure of the paramecium, all right? And we said that what? 
the paramecium is a unicellular ciliated protozoan. It's unicellular, of course. When we talk about forms in which cells exist, we talk about what single or free living. That is the unicellular organisms. And of course, we remember measuring amoeba, we remember measuring paramecium, all right? We remember measuring what clamadomonas, all right? So please, this one they are what they are unicellular. So a paramecium is a what unicellular ciliated uh, protozoan. Okay, it has many, many cilia. It is characterized, all right, we talked with many cilia. Cilia. Okay, it is characterized by a slipper shaped body. Look at it, look like a slippers. I mean, you know, look like slippers. It looks exactly like a slipper, characterized by a slipper shaped what body. All right, and the presence of thousands of what? Of cilia. Okay, it has what, thousands of cilia, these hair like structures that are the cilia work in what? In the paramecium. Okay, that covers what? The surface. All right, it covers the surface. So, and of course, the paramecium is an heterotroph. It is not an autotroph. It's an what? Heterotroph. A paramecium is what? It's an heterotroph. That means it's what it depends on other living organisms for energy. Okay? So it feeds on other living organisms so that it can get what? Energy. It's an heterotroph. It cannot manufacture its own food. It is not autotrophic. All right? So you must take note of that. All right? So it is what? Uh, it is heter it is what is an what an et uh, heterotroph or it is what it's heterotrophic all right so it's an heterotrophic organism meaning it must what feed on other living organisms okay to gain energy okay also it is found in fresh water where you can find paramecium can find them in what in fresh water in fresh water okay you can also find them in what in what we call brackish water brackish brackish water all right you can find them in fresh water or you can find them what in brackish water this brackish water is something we call what, slightly saline what water slightly salty water slightly slightly that's what a brackish water is okay so they can be found in what in fresh water or can be found in what in brackish water which is what slightly saline what uh, water so the cilia like we said that the hairline structure that covers the what the body that covers what the surface of what of the paramecium and it uses the cilia for what for locomotion it uses what the cilia for locomotion locomotion means what i mean you don't know what the locomotion means it means movement too. so it uses what this was cilia okay for what for locomotion the cilia that covers the surface it uses for movement or what for locomotion all right so now these cilia that you are seeing, they beat rhythmically to prepare the cell through the water and to bring food particles into the mouth. Okay, so these cilia, as you are seeing, they propel, they propel the cell through water. You no, know? they are fine with fresh water or brackish water. So the, the cilia is what to propel what the the cell through what this water to what to bring what food particles what into the mouth of what of the what of the of the organism. All right, so now. The flexible outer covering made up of protein. The flexible outer covering, this this part, this part here, this not this hair, this one here, this one, this line, this outer covering, the flexible outer covering that we call what the pellicle. Okay, the flexible outer covering made up of what of protein is called the pellicle, and it provides protection and support for the cell. The pellicle, this pellicle here, this one, the this outer covering all right this outer covering all right it's called what the pellicle okay and it will provide what protection it provides protection and support for the what for the organism okay so know the usefulness of the pellicle in paramecium okay is to provide support all right to provide support and protection for the what for the organism okay and what it is made up of what of protein okay it is made up of protein okay so the flexible outer covering of what of the paramecium called the pellicle is what for, for support and what and for protection for support and for protection now paramecium like we said it has two type of nucleus okay it has two nucleus the micronucleus and the macronucleus okay as you can see them evidently here yeah. and see the macronucleus is what is large Okay, it's large polyploid. It's large and polyploid. Why this is what is uh, is small and what and diploid. Okay, so there are two nucleus: the micronucleus and the macronucleus. The micronucleus and the macronucleus. Now the macronucleus is what is large, as you can see here. The macronucleus is what is large. It's large and 
uh, polyploid nucleus that control all metabolic activities. Okay, it's a large polyploid nucleus that controls all metabolic activities. Controls what all metabolic activities. It is large. It is large and it controls all metabolic work activities. Why? On the other hand, the micronucleus is what is small. As you can see, it's smaller here. Okay, so the micronucleus is what is small diploid nucleus that contains the germline genetic material for production. Okay, it contains what the germline genetic material. It contains it uh, consists of it, con it contains what the germ germline. Okay, the germline genetic material genetic material that is used for what for reproduction. Okay, it means in other words, in other words, reproduction, reproduction takes this in what the micro what nucleus. So primary is what the micronucleus or what for reproduction. All right, so take note of that. It uses what the micronucleus or what. So they may ask you which of the following structures. It's even it's even in a past question. So which of the following structures is what is used? Okay, for the production in the what in the paramecium uh, organism. Okay, it is what the micro what nucleus. All right, you know of course uh, uh, the micro uh, the paramecium what uh, reproduces what sexually and asexually. Sexually by means of what of spore formation, then asexually by either spore or binary fission. Okay, so please take note of that. All right, so they reproduce sexually by spore formation. By spore formation, S P O R O E. By spore formation, S P O R O E, and then asexually by either spore or by binary or fission. So it is what in the micronucleus that what that the what the germline genetic material uh, for production are uh, what are, are contained. That's where what you find the germline or genetic what material that are used for what for reproduction. Okay, it is responsible for the exchange of genetic material. Okay, during what conjugation. Okay, it is responsible. The micronucleus is responsible for the exchange of genetic genetic material all right during what conjugation during conjugation all right now the conjugation i'm talking about here is an essential process that helps to maintain genetic diversity in the population okay it's an essential process that helps to maintain genetic diversity so that i have males you have females okay that helps to maintain ge genetic diversity in the what in the population okay so please take note of that then of course we have what the cystostome, which is called, which we call what the cell mouth. The cystostome is a mouth-like opening in the pellicle. It's a mouth-like opening in the pellicle through which food enters the cell. Okay, it's a mouth-like opening. That's how we call it the cell mouth. Okay, it's a mouth-like opening in the pellicle. Okay, through which food enters into the what into the mouth. Okay, please take note of that. The cystostome. Okay, you see, um, it's a mouth like what opening in the pellicle, which what fools enter into what the mouth to the mouth of what of the organism, okay, through which food enters the cell. All right, now you have also have the oral groove here, which we call what the satopharynx. Okay, the oral groove, the satopharynx helps to guide food particles into the gullet. The this oral groove helps to guide food particles into the gullet of what of the cell. Okay, so uh, that is what the oral groove. They have to guide food particles, guide them so that it does not go to the some of you go to some of them go chop, go pass. We know now it they come out for nose. Okay, so they have what structures, special structures that help them to guide what food particles and so that they will go the right direction, that they will be all right. You get so that is that for what the cyst, uh, the cytopharynx, the cytopharynx. Okay, now the gullet is a short tube that leads from cystostome to the food vacuole. Okay, this is what it's a short tube. The gullet is a short tube that leads uh, from the cystostome, okay, to the what to the food vacuole that leads from the cystostome to the what to the food vacuole. Okay, so uh, we have seen a lot about the paramecium, but also it's also important to know that within the gullet, food particles are transformed into food vacuole. Okay, within the gullet, food particles are transformed into what food vacuole. Okay, within the gullet, food particles are transformed into what food vacuole. Now, paramecium has two types of vacuoles. Paramecia, it has there are two types of vacuoles as you can see here. There's a food vacuole and then there's also what a contractile what vacuole. Paramecia has two types of vacuoles: the food vacuole and the contractile what vacuole. The food vacuole and the contractile what vacuole. Now, what does the food vacuole do? The food vacuole allows paramecia to digest and absorb nutrients from food. 
Okay, it allows what panemiza to what to to absorb and digest what nutrients from food. That's what the food vacuum does. Okay, allow the paramecia to what to absorb and digest what nutrients. Okay, from what from food. That is the function of the food vacuum. Okay, it allows paramecia to digest and absorb nutrients from food. The food injected through the cytosystem is then engulfed by a membrane. The food injected into the cytosystem is then engulfed by what. By a membrane to form food vacuum, okay, to form what full vacuum. The food what in ingested into what into the cytosystem, okay, is then what engulfed by what by a membrane, okay, and of course it then forms what the full vacuum. All right. After digestion by the digestive what enzymes, okay. After digestion by the digestive enzyme, what happens now that the nutrients are now absorbed by the cytoplasm. They are absorbed by the what by the cytoplasm, and then of course waste product. Okay, and now what release through what the cytoprots. Okay, waste product are released through the cytoprots. This cytoprots what is like what the ash, okay, the anal pore. Okay, they are released what through what this what anal pore, what the cytoprot, they call what the cytoprot, cytoprot, cytoprot. Okay, so after digestion have been what have been done by the digestive what enzyme, the nutrients are absorbed by the cytoplasm of what of the cell, and then the waste product are what are released, okay, from by the what by the cytoprot, which is called what the anal pore. Okay, now. The second one, which is what the contractile vacuole, as we're talking about, that like we have said, oh, it's just word for osmoregulation. Okay, for osmoregulation. Let me put that down somewhere. Put that down somewhere. It is what for osmoregulation. Osmoregulation and what for excretion. Okay, it's for osmoregulation and for excretion. All right. So when too much waste, okay, are uh, what are in the uh, are found what in the cytoplasm. Okay, they are what they are. Uh, through what this controller vacuum, they are what they are released. Okay, so the uh, osmoregulation is for to balance internal water. Okay, if there's excess water in the cytoplasm, okay, it goes through out through what by the by the contractor or vacuum. All right, so it's for what for osmoregulation and for excretion. All right, now. That is that about what the paramecium, all right? So please, in case, for example, for any reason you do not understand any part, okay? So just go back to the beginning of the video and watch, and watch it calmly. Now, before we leave this class, so that it doesn't become too long, let me do take some questions from the O3 school jamba. The 2018 question we're looking at initially, number 19, 2018, number 19, it says, the examples of autotrophic organisms include the following except, okay? We already know that paramecium is not what autotrophic, okay? It is, a, it is an heterotroph. A, they say euglena, B, paramecium, C, clamadomonas, D, spirogyra. Okay, and the correct answer there will be paramecium B. Paramecium is what is heterotrophic. It depends. It, it feeds on what? Other living organisms for energy. All right? Then, of course, 2016, number 9. 2016, number 9. They say an example of organisms that are produced by binary fission. Okay, I told you that, that the production, um, this, they use what? This micro this special structure called the micro for what? For the product, for reproduction. Okay, so and I told you that what reproduction in paramecium is either by what it is either as a sexually by what by spore formation or asexually by either spore or binary fission all right so now let's go on they say an example of organism that is produced by binary fission is a vovox b hydra c paramecium d spirogyra okay so the correct answer there will be what paramecium paramecium also what produces by what by binary fission same with what with amoeba okay as we have seen from the last episode okay so there are too many other questions there are many other questions on this app so please go to the play store right now download the app have it on your phone start practicing today and of course you'll see yourself at the top thanks for watching i'll see you in the next episode